Hello. So I'm going to talk to you about spectral attractors, kind of uh, idea behind it, uh, how it works, maybe why I made it. Um, and yeah, let's, let's get into it. What is spectral attractors? Well, it's, it's a max for live instrument. So it, it creates sound. Um, it's, it's sample based. So to use it, the first thing you have to do is put in a sample. So um, here I have some samples. Here's one of guitar harmonics. Okay, and then um, I can just drop that sample right here. And now um, what we'll do is pick a point in the sample of the device and, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of take a snapshot of its spectrum. So I clicked there, if, if I click another spot, and it's, it sounds like some frozen, frozen snapshot of the sample. Okay, so we're hearing this frozen snapshot of the sample. And here we can see it here. And what what first of all, before getting into the device too much, what what this part is is this playback method is called a phase vocoder. And what a phase vocoder is is instead of using a normal uh, traditional sample playback where you're just you're just looking up the sample values and outputting them in the in the audio time domain, uh, the phase vocoder. In, in, for the face vocoder, you will use, um, you will go, this takes place in the frequency domain, and, and basically you'll use two different frames of an FFT, and you'll use them to create this kind of frozen sound of, of that frame. And basically you take, I'm not going to get too into it here, you can look up more about it, but you'll take, the, you'll take one frame of the sound, and that frame is the one I choose here, and then you'll take the next frame too, but you, you'll only take the phase values of the second frame, and you'll use the difference between the two frames of phase values to create a running phase, so to kind of recreate the dynamics of that phase. And then you can kind of have a similar sound to that sound, to that, uh, sorry, to that moment in time, like what we're hearing now. Great, so that's how phase vocoding works, and that's how the playback method of this device works, but that doesn't explain this device in full, but it gives us a good background to understand more. So what this snapshot we see here is, is a snapshot of that FFT frame. And it's actually all the information we need to make this sound, basically, to do a phase vocoder. And what you can do is get more than one frame. Now let's choose a different point. Uh, hold on. There. And now if you notice, I have two different frames I've chosen and we can see that we're kind of going between them through the colors and the sound. And we're kind of being pulled between each of these frames. And what we're hearing is wherever we're at between these two frames. And wherever we're at, we can hear. And that's because of the nature of this device. This device is a simulation taking place on a and and this is a physics simulation but it's taking place in not two or three dimensions but thousands of dimensions and each of these dimensions is one of the values we need to create a phase vocoder in stereo so a phase vocoder um, would need quite a few thousand values to make a good decent sound because you need all of the magnitude values for every frequency VIN, all the phase values for every frequency VIN, all the phase values for the next frames uh, frequency bins, and that's just for one channel. For stereo it's twice that. 
So I think this device has, uh, I don't remember how many dimensions at this point, but um, over 10,000, I would think. And so what's happening here is we're having a, a gravitational attraction um, simulation in these 10 plus thousand dimensions. Ooh, okay, what does that mean? Well, let's first, before we're dealing with this complicated mode, let's look at this in just a two-dimensional mode. And this mode's a bit easier to understand, especially if I get three segments. So this mode's a bit different. Right now we just have a, a, po a point, this white point, and this is what we're hearing. The white point is getting closer to the different colored points, um, the blue, the yellow, and the red. And as we see here, the, the blue, yellow, and red points are assigned to these different spectral frames. In fact, let's even load in a different sample, uh, Kalimba, and make the blue point the Kalimba sound. And now you can see as we get closer to the blue sound, the Kalimba, or the, or the yellow sound, uh, okay, if we get closer to the point, we hear more and more the sound it represents, and we can see that here on the bins too. <laughs> So that's how this 2D mode is working. We're simply interpolating the spectrum. And as we get closer to each one, the interpolation, uh, it becomes uh, closer to that spectral value. So we hear that sound from the phase vocoder. And what we're hearing is this white point and wherever it's at between these different spectrum. So that's easier to understand in this 2D mode. But now in FFT mode, it's back to what I was trying to explain before, which is that now we're in a simulation that's not two dimensions. It's in many thousands of dimensions. And we're still being pulled between the values, but instead of them interpolating their spectrum, we're literally having every dimension represent a different value of the spectra and then we we and then we hear the points we're at in that many dimensional space um, because since the point we're at is in say 10 plus thousand dimensions then we can just use the value of that coordinate um, as, uh, as um, a spectra to sound in the phase vocoder. Okay, if that's all too confusing, please check out the device for more info. I have plenty of info there, and feel free to reach out to me. Um, otherwise, um, let me talk a bit, a bit more about what's going on here in this physics simulation. So basically, these controls control the simulation, the velocity of the physics, the power of the attraction, and a step value, which kind of limits the step of the physics, like how it can traverse, how much it can traverse or change at any given frame, and then the speed of the overall simulation. And basically, um, yeah, so you can use these four different points up to four different points and kind of um, have this physics simulation um, be attracted between these different points. And I have this quick button here, this question mark, and that will randomly grab slices from whatever samples in here. Although, I just remembered this sample is not so dynamic, so let's just do all of the kalimba.
And it, 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 it mostly has this kind of whiny, dreamy, s- spectrally sound to it. Um, and you can do things like offset the pitch. Um, you have some envelopes for uh, the changing spectral values. Um, you can record audio input from other tracks and then you know, slice it. You can also change the pitch of the sample before you add in a slice. So now it's an octave higher, and I'll do a slice an octave higher. Then I'll do a slice that's an octave lower. Right, so now it will pull between these different octaves. And this snap button here is it just says that when you create a new uh, frame, if we're gonna snap straight to that frame or not. So when it's on, if I, if I clicked a new spot here, we'd immediately go to that sound. But if snaps off, I can click a spot and it won't do that. It will just keep going and uh, start, and then these will just change the dynamics of the attraction. Likewise, these, these number values here tell us, you know, if we were to reset the system or reload a preset, which, which state are we going to start at? And that could kind of change the dynamics of everything. Or you can start at a random noise state. And doing that will kind of introduce some noise into the system sometimes. And like I said, we have also this 2D system and the dynamics are much different here because they're much different, uh, they're much less information considered. There's only two dimensions. Um, so you don't get the kind of rich complexity as much as you would in this FFT mode. But it will save CPU. All right. And um, this was an attempt at me early on when I was starting to learn some chaos theory of trying to apply attractors. Um, and I was trying to see if I could get chaotic th- behavior through having these very complex, um, many dimensional and um, multi-point attractors. I'm not sure if I succeeded. Um, if there is really chaotic behavior in here, um, it might depend on the conditions um, and positioning, but um, I'm not sure. But this was my attempt early on before I learned a bit more about chaos theory and um, just kind of implementing some ideas I was, I was learning and working with. Okay, well... Um, definitely check out the device if you can and check out the preset sounds there's a lot more um, nice sounds you can get with it Thanks for your time.